Hello YouTube, me too back with a another collection video and this is kind of following on the heels of the complete uh, 3D set for the mass system or PAL set um, and this time I'm going to be doing the kind of complete Western uh, Sega card uh, set and again there's only about 10 or so uh, releases um, but before I begin a few caveats about this one there's an absolute boatload of variants for the Sega card games um, different uh, versions of you know with different languages throughout Europe there's the American ones and you could collect probably forever uh, on variants of the Sega cards I'm not doing that <laughs> one version from the US or, the, or, or Europe is fine by me and the second caveat is hang on but I'll discuss that when I'm discussing hang on so here's the, the complete set the Paul as I said not too many um, I suppose actually before I start I should probably explain a bit about what the Sega cards are in case people are unfamiliar um, so we'll pull out I suppose Transvaal a famous one which is bottom of the top of the pile here <coughs> and the Sega cards as you can see by the cover are basically these small credit card kind of sized uh, games uh, the Mass System 1 and the Power Base Converter 1 were able to play two formats of games the standard cartridge format and then the second Sega card format and these were designed to be kind of cheaper alternative games and um, so when you know a cartridge game was running at uh, say 30 pounds uh, a card game would be less than half that and so it was kind of like you know for budget conscious gamers and it, it did kind of tie into the, to the ability of the system to kind of compete to some degree against home computers uh, one of the kind of common complaints about uh, consoles was that the games are so expensive when you could buy a game on tape or a game on floppy disk for you know anything from one or two pound to say ten pound fifteen pound so this enabled Sega to kind of reduce the cost somewhat, but there was a trade-off. Because of the file, or because of the size uh, and the technology involved, the actual game size was restricted to 32K. So basically that's the smallest um, game size for a Master System uh, cart. And later on, of course, they would have four mega cartridges. So <laughs> that was quite a bit bigger than these little boys. But um, yeah. That's kind of the reason for them and why Sega went with them. Because memory became cheaper as time went on, it became less practical to use these. And they were all largely released in the first year of the Mass System's life. So you started to see these titles, all the card games, bar one, were re-released as standard cartridges. And that coincided with, of course, the Mass System Model 2, which had no card reader it just there wasn't the market there even I know the, the 3d glasses which was in my last uh, collection video also used the car or the car slot but again there was only a small number of games and by the end of the, car, the 3d glasses lifespan they were starting to make it a, a optional mode or you know not even mention it in the case of line of fire so kind of the cards suffered a similar fate Sell, you know, used to sell the system in the beginning and kind of waned off. But for a collector, they're kind of a unique uh, part of the Sega Master System puzzle. They kind of stand out. You know, I mean, look at if you look at the boxes, they're kind of like more DVD sized. And we'll just take a look at. I'll do them in alphabetical order, I suppose. So flip that up. We we'll go back to the beginning, which is B. Um, so we look at the inside, and this was a recent pickup, of course. But the games themselves, as I mentioned, are, are fairly small. And the game itself is only on this part here. This is just decoration. So it's just that little bit there. Of course, most um, cartridges themselves, if you actually open them up, there's often a lot of empty space in there. And you, they even wrote a slot on the back where you can put your name. Annoying, again, for collectors, people sometimes put their name on it. <laughs> um, so this one is actually the European release. This was the last card I had to get to my set. Now, again, you might notice that there's quite a big holder area, much bigger than the actual card. Cards usually came in 
Like you, they did come in a little kind of a slip that you were meant to put them in to kind of, I suppose, protect the, the exposed circuit. Uh, but they tended to get lost. They're very hard to come by. I've got the complete set of cards and I think I only got two of those covers. So there you go. I also noticed that the, um, the hang tabs seem to be chopped off much more often on these in standard boxes. But however, um, that's the first one, Bang Panic. Now this is actually, might be um, the first one I've taken out because it's B, it's alphabetical, but it was actually the second last one released in 1987. Out of all of them, only two of them, I believe, weren't released in 1986. So it really shows you that um, it was it was very much an early thing, you know, to help sell the system. You had these cheap, you know, low end kind of entry games, and the system in the UK at, at least as well was positioned as kind of like uh, for a lot of its life has been kind of an entryway console. Even when the Mega Drive came out, you know, it was still you could use the um, the Master System as kind of a launch pad because it was like somewhere between fifty and a hundred pounds depending on your bundle and your location. So anyway, that's Bank Panic. Next up we have F-16 Fighter, again a very early title, yeah, another fun, I mean, <clears throat> another point about the box art is that they always um, have the, usually got the same format where they have the hand holding the actual card, and the card turned out to be the artwork then for the later cartridge release, so you can see this has got a very exciting artwork, just like an aiming icon, that's it. Um, F-16 Fighter is also notable in that it's not compatible with the Powerbase Converter. You can get to the title screen, but it uses the backwards compatible graphics mode of basically this was going to be an SG-3000 game, is that, that's, I think that's what it was, and they port, you know, kind of, Sega like were bringing out the Mark III and whatnot, so it was kind of ported over as it were. And it's also, it's not by Sega, it's by Nexa, I think, is it? Yeah, Nexa, 1985. So again, a very early title on the system. You actually need two controllers, I believe, to play this. <coughs> and it must be somewhat complicated to play because for a US game, that is a tick manual. Again, I'm not too sure if that's going to come across, but normally the US manuals are bloody tiny. But there's 36 pages in this, all English. That's, that's a large manual for a game in 1985, which surely you would think is about shooting stuff. Anyway, onwards and upwards. Now we have Ghost House, and this was the first card game I got. I had a Mass System too, so I never had any cards when I was younger. These are entirely a uh, kind of a modern collection thing. Um, all the spines are going to be very similar. Oop. And I actually have two copies of this, and um, the reason why will be I'll uh, mention later. Um, I, another thing I noticed as well, sometimes the code's different. Sega Masters and Games, particularly in Europe, have very distinct product codes, so you can tell what they are. Uh, and it usually determines their file size, location, and so on. Um, so it, it certainly is handy for, for telling if people are spoofing with their numbers. You, you can actually validate the release. So this one has 4002M and then its sibling has 4002A. Now I don't know what the A and the M mean on those. Um, I think the other thing basically is second of the uh, four size series card games. I could be mistaken though. In fact, I have a funny thing, I am mistaken on that. Oh. No one's probably interested anyway. But uh, next up then we have the the rarest, easily the, the hardest to get, well, again there's a caveat about hang on, but I would say this is the hardest to get in kind of normal version, and this is the German version. Um, there is an Ariola soft version as well as, as then there's the UK version, there's Italian versions, there's loads of variants, and yet it's still bloody rare. Ooh, I can't open it. So, because this is the rarest, I gave it one of my very few slip cases. I probably should have put it into a, a thing that has a, a hang tab, but however. Yeah, this is also the only unique game. This never got ported over to a cartridge release. I suspect the reason is that they already had a game called Great Soccer on cartridge. Sorry, it was called World Soccer over in Europe, but it was called Great Soccer in America. Um, and I imagine they felt that, well, because 
they have a soccer game that was more advanced or perhaps it was more advanced that there was no point bringing this one over whatever reason that makes it a lot more collectible so there you go that's the one to look out for if you can find it and right next door is the other one that in theory is rarer and that's hang on now it should be fairly obvious from looking at this that this is a reproduction insert because to get a box copy is bloody hard this is very much like the um, I think it's called like the four pack in one game that came with the Game Gear you know you can get loose copies all day long one of the most common games but to get a, a box copy very very hard now again a loose copy came with loads and loads of master stamps so you can pick this up easily enough loose the version I actually got, well I have one UK loose one but I also have um, the German one, so it's the German manual and the German card I think it was something German written on the back yep just take it out there, all the back is in German so this came with the German console and had its own manual But uh, there is a box copy of this available, and there's even a one that has like red front on it, and that's like some sort of prototype artwork that they did. Again, very very rare. You see that once every few years for auction. Um, personally, though, I'll probably do a proper cover for this because I did this before I was doing my reproduction, so it was just a quick inkjet thing on whatever paper I had, and I was fairly roughly cut out. It's like buckly alone. Place. So it's kind of like it'll do, and I just I got the second copy of Ghost House actually, so I could have a box to put it in. But for me, I'm not gonna try and get a box copy of this. It's one of those things that's just so expensive for such a common item that to get an insert, I'll make my own. And I'll be happy without it. It's not like I'm gonna try and sell it around as a fake. So you could class a box hang on as the rarest one, depending on your definition of you know having a complete set. So, one of my favourite uh, card games is also probably one of the worst. It's My Hero. Got the uh, the God Hand box art, you could call it. You know, the guy getting punched in the face. Um, I know the kind of eager eyed might notice uh, my Black, Black Belt 2 uh, reproduction used that hand <laughs> as, as the kind of punching hand with the explosion thing. Um, so yeah, this is the European version. Actually, what were these versions? That was European, obviously. That was German, so it was European. Uh, that was American, full English back. That's American as well. And bang, Panic is European. As I said, as long as it's from, you know, America or Europe, I'm happy. It's It doesn't have to be all European. So yeah, my panic. It's one of those games where um, I know Retro Bob has got the world record in this. A lot. Of, it's it's primitive. You know, scrolling from left to right over a few levels, basically flying, kicking everything in sight because the punching and the, the other moves are crap. It's repetitive. It's got a tune that will go through your head and make you want to like kill yourself or something. But for whatever reason, I quite like it. Um, it was a second card game I got, so maybe that's something to do with me playing it as a novelty. <clears throat> so next up we have one of the trickier ones to get and uh, it's Spy vs Spy. Now this one stands out like a sore tongue because it's got actual artwork instead of the hand holding the card. This is the, this is the last card release in 1988 and um, as I mentioned most of them came out in 86. Bank Panic was 87 and this is 88 so this is quite odd like i don't know why they decided to put this on a sega card so late um on into the system when the card format had basically been abandoned after the first year or so so this is the this is the us version because it's tricky to find um and as i wasn't too pushed i managed to get it in a trade from Canada. i think it was and in fact because i hadn't got around to cleaning the box up there's a few little you know marks on it it's still all packaged up from um, when the Sega bit seller sent it to me. So, there we go. 
Um, I actually have Spy vs. Spy in the character format and I have it on the NES as well. And yeah, I think you really need to play that in two player to get the best of it, out of it. Um, another card that I got then from Sega, if you remember, and that's Super Tennis. God, I hate Super Tennis. I know these games are kind of simple. They're all fairly simple, you know, single screen or, you know, a few levels and then repeat and a few number of values. But that was, that was the point. They were small games, they were cheap games. But Jesus Christ, do I hate Super Tennis. <laughs> and I had several versions on the cartridge. It was just like one of those games that was like thrown to me or something. I actually have two versions of the card as well. Um, so this one is actually in a cover too, although the cover is going off flappy. Uh, so there we go, Super Tennis. What's there to say about that? It's another one I actually need to clean the box up a little bit. Oh yeah, because the second version I had was um, came out a reproduction manual. And I kind of have the impression of mine it came out a reproduction insert. Now I knew the manual was, was a reproduction. Which is it? Yeah, you know, they did an okay job. It's a A4 page type of thing, and then over that. <clears throat> so I figured, well, you know what? You can you can get a European manual for this so easy. Uh, I'll just you know, get a European manual. In fact, I think I had one. It could even be this manual. So, you know, I wasn't concerned about it. The 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 extra kind of reproduction manual. And it, it was presumably by seller. It wasn't by Sega or anything. So that was by Barney on the Sega Performance of Outcall. Uh, it's, it's probably the cheapest card game, Super Tennis. So if you want one as a novelty or to try out, and a lot of people do, if they've just gone into Mass System Collecting and you want to find one cheap and quickly, that or probably Ghost House are the ones to go for, I'd say. Um, then we have Teddy Boy. Teddy Boy. Teddy Boy, even. Uh, I did a gameplay on this, <laughs> a lot of people said, oh, I didn't kind of, you know, give it a right go, or I didn't um, kind of get quite what was going on, and I, it kind of opened me mission that in the video that I was probably missing something, because I couldn't quite get it, but apparently there's 50 levels, which for a card game is a lot. Um, so this is the, Eng Engl or the European version, I'm going to say English, and all of these are complete. So this one's actually got a little cover too, even better. And last one, which we've seen a bit of before, is Ninja Bear Hugs, most favourite shooter ever, Transbot. There we go. And this was like, one of the, possibly my first gameplay with commentary was Transbot. I didn't quite dislike it as much as him. And although it is very primitive, and there we go, it's complete again, except for the slip. So I'm missing its wheels and monkey. Yeah, I can see why he's not a massive fan. It does repeat a fair bit. I have, um, obviously I've got the standard cart version of this, but I also have the Portuguese purple re re you know, release, which has kind of got fairly funky artwork. Uh, certainly more so than this Heil Hitler artwork that's going on. So, that's the set. Um, not everyone collects the cards, because all of them are the one. 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah. So 9 of the 10 are, are all kind of just kind of variants, if you will. But because they have a different physical format and they have their own boxes and packaging and whatnot, I thought, you know, pretty much straight away these were going on my collection list for a full set. Um, everyone makes their own, so there's no such thing as, well, if you don't collect them, <laughs> your set's not complete. So, I mean, I've kind of cheated with Hang On, but realistically, uh, I'm not going to spend the money to, you know, to, to get a, a box. Hang on. Um, now, I, I know at the beginning I said, well, one of the things about the Sega cards was they were cheap to develop, they were cheaper to produce because of the, the format, uh, and that kind of was reflected in the price and what you got. I mean, if you look through the games, you can kind of go, trans, but uh, hit and miss. Teddy Boy, that's got a bit more going for it. Super Tennis, the less said about that, the better. Spy vs. Spy is actually a commendable port of Spy vs. Spy. Um, my Hero, a lot of people would dislike that. I've got a soft spot for it. Hang On is actually pretty decent, built into most consoles, at least in, in the UK it was. Uh, Great Soccer, I couldn't figure out how to play it <laughs> well, but apparently it's quite good. 
first a simplistic game. Ghost House again, I heard a lot of Americans have a, a fondness for this game. I think there's actually a few little hidden bits in it, but again it's fairly simplistic. This is incredibly basic, at least in graphics terms. Maybe it's quite complicated to play, in fact it definitely seems to be, but I don't know, it doesn't seem great fun. And Bank Panic, so kind of a single screen style shooting game. Mixed you know, quality in terms of the games themselves, which says it all when you've got a Paul starting up Transbot. <laughs> Well, you look at some of the other games that were 32K, um, and you had things like Astro Warrior, even Pit Pot, um, I suppose Super, Super Hang, not Super Hang On, and, you know, not all the 32K games were kind of cheapy kind of games, and, uh, and perhaps showed off more what the system could do. Certainly if you compare Transbot to Astro Warrior, I'm pretty sure they're both the same file size, so they're the Astro Warrior could have fit on, on the card, but it was a much better game. <laughs> and it never got a sample on release over here, despite being a much better game. It was only bundled up with Pitbot. So there you go. Anyway, that's kind of getting off topic on a fairly centered video about a certain set of games. So that leaves only one thing, and I suppose that's the same. Thanks for watching. Until next time.